Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about the bipolar junction transistor or BJT. On the right hand side here we have the circuit diagram for a BJT. It has three parts. It has a base, a collector and an emitter. The emitter is depicted with the arrow. On the left here we have a, I suppose a cartoony depiction of a bipolar junction transistor and hope this will help you understand its operation. So just to explain the parts of it, we have um, we have basically our, our, our transistor in here, which I'll talk about in a moment, and we have wiring. So these tubes are supposed to be wiring. We also have a battery here, or a voltage source, where the horizontal terminal, or the longer of the horizontal lines represents a positive terminal, and the shorter representing a negative terminal. An E here represents an electron as a charge carrier, and a H there represents a hole. So basically, a transistor is a, 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 a it's a it's a, a p-n junction sandwich. So if you want to know about p-n junctions, look at another di another video that I've put up. So like I said, it's a it's a p-n junction sandwich, generally consisting of three uh, pieces of semiconductor, which is basically two p-n junctions or two diodes. So in this case, uh, we have an n-p-n junction, or you could have a p-n-p. So in an n-p-n, what happens is you have a p-type semiconductor sandwich between an n-type and another n-type, and obviously vice versa for a p-n-p. And what will happen is when it's on, when that's when in that this configuration, uh, you can you can make a switch, and I'll show you how we do that. So I'm using a PNP, or wrong, an NPN. Notice that we have N-type, P-type, and heavily doped N-type here. Okay, so the parts of it of my transistor are I have my collector in green, okay, which is N-type, my base in white, which is P-type, and my emitter in yellow, which is doped heavily in the N-type. Now, in order to get any electronic device working, you obviously need to put it into a circuit. And the wiring for a transistor, which I'll physically show you later on, is you connect your collector and your emitter through this wire here, and you connect your base and your emitter through this wire here. Now, what I don't have is a, is a battery or voltage source on the, the collector and emitter, but it's, that's implied and you'll see that later on. So for the moment, when I discuss the operation of it, I want you to ignore that this wire here is, is in existence. Just ignore that one and forget about it. So I'm going to talk about the base emitter junction. So first of all, I apply a voltage source between the base and the emitter. And uh, as you should know from, from the PN junction video, when a PN junction is set up, you have a depletion region between the two types of semiconductor. So I'll represent this by the darker line there. A depletion region. And once uh, 0.6 volts has been reached and overcome, this depletion region will shrink and the PN junction will begin to conduct. So you can imagine that as the as the uh, the, the voltage is reaching 0.6 volts, we have negative charge starting to travel towards the depletion region. And when 0.6 volts has been reached and overcome, the junction will conduct as normal and you will get a flood, an absolute flood of electrons into the junction like that. Okay? As a normal PN junction will work. So I'll just rub that out. Next. The electrons will flow towards the positive terminal as those E's are represented and down and back into the emitter. So you can imagine the electrons just doing this. Once of course the 0 0.6 volts has been has been reached. So it's just a conducting PN junction. And if you want, you could also think about, instead of electrons going this way, you could think about it as positive charge going this way. In other words, holes. So we can, we can say that holes are flooding into the base, while electrons are flooding out of the base. Okay? Now, the holes, as a hole, well I'm going to draw a hole as a, as a, as a positive. As the holes are flooding into the base, what they will do is they will attract even more electrons out of the emitter in. So the point anyway is that a small base is attracting a, an enormous number of electrons from the emitter into the base just by having uh, the, the correct, um, we'll say, potential on, on the junction. So in we come with the collector. Now the collector, as its name says, collects the electrons and that's what actually is used that's the part of your transistor that's used as a switch or so, or so forth. Okay, so what we will do is we will connect our collector and our emitter. Or what we'll do is we'll put our collector on high and our emitter on low. 
I'll show you that later on, so don't worry about that. So, if you can imagine, I won't draw it in, that we have the electrons flooding into the base. Flooding into the base, but at the same time, remember, we have the depletion region along here. Sorry, that's uh, just uh, along here. We have a depletion region along here. And provided, once again, that the contact, uh, contact potential of uh, 0 0.6 has been, has been reached and overcome, the, the base and collector junction will also conduct. So what will happen is, essentially, all of your electrons will flood into your collector. Like 99% 99, 99 of your electrons will be pulled across the base junction and into the collector. So, like that. And of course, some will be going along here, like that. But 99% of them will be just jumping in into the collector through the base and an even smaller amount of them will be recombining with holes in the base to form in, in, in the atoms and so on, okay? So they, we have three ways the electrons, three things the electrons would do. 99% of them will flood into the collector, a small percentage of them will flow out of the base and back into the emitter, and uh, an even smaller percentage of them will just recombine with holes in the base. And what will happen to these electrons up here? Well, they'll flow down. They'll flow into the emitter. But the point of this is the reason this is uh, the the, re the reason the transistor is used is that a small voltage or a small current, we'll say, a small current uh, flowing into the base in terms of holes. And I got you got to kind of imagine positive current flowing, so positive charge flowing in, which is the same as negative charge flowing out. So a small positive charge flowing in will will cause an enormous amount of negative charge to flow out of the collector, an enormous amount. So it's actually, a, a, a BJT is, is actually a good amplifier. And as a result, it can be used as a switch, whereby you have a small input voltage, and with that, you have, a, you have, a, you have an output voltage or current. Well, it, in terms of electronics, usually people deal with voltages. So the, the, the point to be really taken on board here is that only when there is current flowing into the base is there current flowing out of the collector. Okay? And that's when the, the transistor is on. If you do not have any current flowing into the base, well, then the transistor is off and it does not conduct at all. Right, and that, that's essentially how, uh, how a, a bipolar junction transistor works. Now, I think it's much better for you to physically see what an operation, and I'll do that in a moment. Now, before I do that, I'm going to show you, I suppose, the mats, a small bit of mats, very small bit of mats, of how it's used as a switch. Now, here's a different sort of transistor. It's called a MOSFET. Instead of having a base, a, a collector and emitter, we have a gate G, a drain D, and a source S. Pretty much with the same functions as your base, collector, and emitter over here. Okay? Now, the circuit I've set up is where I have a high line up here, VDD. I have a low line down here. I have my MOSFET. Uh, I have a resistor. That's RD, and I have an output. Okay, I don't know if you can really see that, so let's bring that closer. All right. Now let's just quickly go through some of the maths here, very quickly. Now I'm not going to push this. Just this is just for anybody that really wants to know these sort of things. So, if you can imagine putting a low input on your gate, right? So a low low input on your gate, and as you said a moment ago, when there's low low input on your gate or your your base, your transistor does not conduct. So the voltage between the gate here and the source here is zero volts because the thing is not conducting. The the current, the current flowing from from here down, if you're talking about conventional current, is zero because the gate is not or the, the transistor is not conducting. So the voltage dropped, okay, V D, the voltage dropped up here is the current times the resistance. Now the resistance is the resistance of the resistor, but there is no current, so there are no volt there is no voltage dropped across here. And as a result what happens is all your current will flow down here through the resistor and out your output because it won't flow down through your resistor and into ground here. It will flow straight out and as a result you get a high. So a low input will give you a high output. Now anybody doing a small bit of electronics will realize that this is actually a NOT gate. Anyway, on the opposite side if we have the voltage between the gate and the sources high or large, current will flow down your transistor. As a result there will be a voltage dropped 
Okay, the voltage dropped across your 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 we'll say your resistor up here, R D. So basically instead of having V D D going out your uh, out this direction here, what'll happen is you'll have V D D minus V across the resistor. And that'll basically give you a low. So you put input input high and output low. Now the reason these are good to use as switches is that they can change between states high and low very quickly. Now I said I'd show you a physical setup of a transistor and that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, here's the circuit diagram I'm going to use. If you want to if you're if you're getting caught or you don't really understand what's going on, look at my video the R gate. It's the exact same video. So very quickly, here's my BJT. We have my collector, my emitter and my base. Now you always have a resistor in series with your base in order to limit the current flowing into it otherwise you'll break it and you always have a resistor going in series with your collector as well for the exact same reason. I'm using a 9 volt input and this symbol here is an LED which will be on my out. Okay so I'm just going to pause it there for a moment. Okay and here's my breadboard now I know it looks very cluttered, and that's because I was already building another uh, another circuit, and I don't want to get rid of it yet. So down here we have a transistor, a single transistor, to show you what it looks like. Ooh, get that in focus. Okay, it's got three pins. Okay, you can see on the right it's kind of got rounded side, on the left it's a flat side. If you face the flat side, you have a your collector, your base in the center, and your emitter on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my, my transistor into my circuit, or into my breadboard. Next, next I'm going to go from the high line to a 600 ohm resistor and then into my collector. So this yellow you can assume comes in, to, comes in from a high line. That comes from the positive of my battery. I'm going to use the 600 ohm resistor and I'm going to have that in series. I'll give you a close up now on that in a moment. Second of all, I have a 600 ohm resistor in series with my base and that will be my input. This here is, is, is my input wire. I'm going to put a 600 ohm resistor in, from that in series with my base. Okay, just to show you that. Okay, there's the high wire coming into my resistor. That goes into that goes into the collector of my uh, transistor. This wire here is the base, and that will come down into the into my input via the resistor that I pulled out. So you can see, put it back in now. Just like that, and you'll see in the circuit diagram I have to ground my emitter from here and that's going out the ground like that. Finally we have to do my output. So there's my one sec now poke it out of the way. This here, that's my collector. My output's coming from my collector. In here I'm gonna leave a space for an LED and that goes to ground. So I'm just gonna plug in my LED. Ooh, show there. The longer leg is for the positive terminal. Very quickly now, I'm going to plug in my power, and what you have, the way it works, remember, it, it will conduct when the base is on, the base is on currently, the transistor is conducting, therefore the output is low, and when I open it up, when there is no current flowing into the base, the current can flow through this resistor and out, just exactly like I did in my MOSFET. And that is how a bipolar junction or a transistor or a BJT works.